But the fact that people with autism are more likely to have a police encounter due, due to certain risk factors. On my own experience knowing people who had police encounters, mm -hmm. and my bottom line is what do we do to make it go better when they happen or prevent them in the first place? Okay. And so if you're talking about the risk factors, what do you think, I've heard you say that people with autism are more likely, it doesn't matter how many times more likely, but definitely more likely to have an encounter, either as a suspect, a witness, a person of interest. Mm -hmm. What are the main risk factors that, as you see them for both law enforcement officers and for those persons with autism? Sure. Well, first of all, autism is an invisible disability. Okay. So when people with autism meet the police, the police don't know they have autism. Mm -hmm. They may, the police typically respond to behaviors that they see. And they typically think that most unusual behaviors are either due to drugs and alcohol or sure. mental illness. So our people, one of the greatest risk factors is being misinterpreted okay. as somebody who has drugs, alcohol, or mental illness when in fact they're displaying signs of autism. So being okay. an invisible disability, misinterpreted, mm -hmm. maybe can't communicate uh, in the situation with the police. Okay. Uh, can't, so they don't respond as expected and then that takes things to a, know, different level. a different level. Or they don't have the right social behaviors. Like they look disrespectful, defiant, disobedient. That facial expression. They look flat and they, they, they don't respond as expected. And then again, if they're, if they're perceived as defiant, that, that really you know, doesn't go down well with the police when actually they may have a processing delay okay. or they may not understand, hey, you can't get so close to the police. So all kinds of things uh, make them at risk when they're in a police encounter. Mm -hmm. They're at risk to get into a police encounter because of features of their disability. Sure. For example, they could be tricked by someone, yeah. set up to commit a crime, victimized. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are these greater uh, risk factors. Well, I, there's so much information that we could talk about beyond just the initial teaching phase of this program, both from the law enforcement perspective and also from on the side of the community and our, our young people. But I feel like we could do a whole separate show about what happens in the event someone ends up in the criminal justice system or, God forbid, in jail for something that they really either didn't do or didn't understand their rights and so they ended up in a situation they may not have otherwise been in. What is the the law enforcement training section of this program? So I have a program called Experience Autism, okay. and it's experiential learning that gives law enforcement an idea of what it feels like to have autism. So okay. we do a simulation activity that gives empathy to the police. I feel that if they understand features of autism, they can come up with their own solutions. So for example, we do an activity where the police have to rephrase a sentence we give them like, I love dogs, and we tell them to say, I love dogs without using any words with the letter O. Okay. And what we get from them is a pause. I love dogs. I like canines. I like canines. Okay. So then they've experienced a language delay, a processing delay, and I said, look how long it t took you to answer my question. Mm -hmm. They're constantly asking people questions. And when they get the delay, what do they think of it? That you're under the influence of some type. So we say, if that's what it feels like to have just a tiny taste of a language processing problem in autism, how could you help that person? And then the police tell the solution. So we're not mm -hmm. telling them what to do. Okay. We give them understanding so that they know what to do. So in your experience in training these law enforcement officers, what have you heard in terms of those self-suggested fixes well, by police officers? They're the things we would want them to do anyway. They, okay. say, you know, they say, I could, I could wait. I could give them more time. I could mm -hmm. simplify the question. Mm -hmm. they, they have lots of tools in their toolbox already but they don't know to apply it to this population until we give them that insight and perspective right. through the training. And I, I recently did it with the Burbank PD. We trained all 100 officers there, and one of our partner trainers was the father of a little girl with autism. Okay. And he said, this is amazing. You know, if you would just listen to what they're saying, this would help my daughter, this yeah. would help everybody's child. You know, it, it just it does give them really great insight, and they will do the right thing if they can. Okay.